Hey guys, I'm gonna teach you really quickly about the SteriPath device. The SteriPath device is a um, diversion device that we use for all of our blood cultures. It's really important that we always do our blood cultures using the SteriPath device, um, unless under very specific circumstances. The way we make that a little bit easier for you is that we keep all of these devices, the bags that keep them, we keep them in the exact same tower as we keep our blood cultures. So when you go to get the uh, bottles for your blood cultures, you can grab a SteriPath device and take it with you to the room. These should not be left in the room. You shouldn't have them in the IV cart. So we want to make sure that they stay in that centralized location. So again, that everyone is being able to use them. Okay, so the main reason that we use a SteriPath device is because um, for the past few years, um, our blood culture contamination rate has been excellent. But prior to that, our blood culture contamination rate was higher than most of the national average. We were anywhere between three and 5% any given month with an overall average of about three and a half percent. So that's a lot of patients who were having contaminations who didn't need to have contaminations. And when you have a contamination, you have additional blood draws that need to take place. Maybe you might be getting antibiotics for longer than is absolutely necessary. And when we did the research, we found that patients spend an additional day in our hospital um, being exposed to um, other potential errors that could occur. So we save money, we get patients out of the uh, hospital a little bit faster, and they don't get the, um, uh, the additional antibiotics that they really don't need by having a contamination and we limit additional blood draws for this patient down the line, okay? So it's really important that we decrease our contaminations. I will tell you that in the last two years that we've been using this device, we have maintained a blood culture contamination rate of right around 1%, which is fantastic. In the previous couple of months, we've actually dropped below 1% multiple times. So we know that this works. It's a very easy device to use and it shouldn't change up your practice. All right, so when using the SteriPath device, you're gonna to need to have one of these devices. There's actually three different versions. I'm gonna show you two of them. One of them is the Lure Lock. So this is, a, it actually sets up on an IV. So when you're starting your IV, you can go ahead and use this device. Um, we also have a um, straight stick butterfly. We have them in a 21 gauge and a 23 gauge. So if you're drawing that second set of cultures or you just need another set of cultures, um, this, uh, you can always use the straight stick. Um, but I will tell you that pretty much on average, we use this the majority of the time. All right, what's nice about this is once it connects to uh, your patient, after you've taken your blood sample, this tubing can stay on your IV. It is CT rated. All right, um, just really quick, what you have here is you obviously have the tubing. And then within this device itself, you have a little tube, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but on the inside of here, you have a tube that will draw and hold about um, one to two mLs of blood. We call that the diversion. Um, what's important about it is that when I'm cleaning my arm, and I do a great job of cleaning my arm, maybe I don't even touch it again, I do all the things right, I'm still only cleaning about the first five or so layers of skin, and there's a lot more layers underneath there. And when I take a cord needle or an IV and I stick my patient, I actually get what we call a skin plug. And initially, before we started using the SteriPath device, that skin plug would end up in our first set of cultures. And so we don't want that potentially contaminated skin plug to end up into one of our cultures. So that's where this device has really become um, a good benefit for us because that skin plug ends up in the diversion. Okay, um, so then we collect our diversion. We click this one more time, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. And then it creates a straight path, um, a clean, sterile path into our blood cultures. All right, so first things first, we wanna make sure that we uh, do a really good job of cleaning our patient's arm, all right? So we put the tourniquet on, and we figure out exactly where we, we feel like we can get a good um, culture. Um, and for most of the time, again, we're probably gonna start an IV, right? So I'm using chlorhexidine, I'm gonna clean this. It has to do a, a one minute clean and dry. And I know that that's a lot, um, but we wanna make sure that we really do the skin prep the right way. The SteriPath is gonna help us with a lot of things, but we still should be doing things the same way and right every single time. Additionally, while we're waiting for this to dry, we can go ahead and pop the top on our culture bottles, um, and we're gonna clean those with alcohol, okay? So they really need to be done with alcohol, not chlorhexidine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and clean the top of these bottles. Just because there's been a cap on it doesn't mean that this is sterile, so we need to make sure that it stays clean. Now, what I see a lot of times is people leave the alcohol piece on top and they walk away from it. 
but it's the drying process that helps with the um, decrease in the contamination. Okay, so it is very important that after you clean it, and again, you should do a good clean on it, you actually should set it aside without the alcohol on it. Or if you have a partner in this, you wanna maybe have them remove that alcohol and give it that same amount of time um, once you've got the IV and whatnot in um, to make sure it has a chance to dry. So that's a really important piece of this. The other thing that a lot of people do and I encourage you to do with your blood culture bottle is to mark it at the eight to 10 ml mark. You really need to have eight to 10 mls in your culture bottle um, for us to get a really good sample. And actually it decreases the contamination rate because we have a good sample in here. All right, so most people will want to mark it because it's hard when I'm drawing blood, it may not actually be able, um, you may not be able to see these graduated um, uh, markers as easily when you're, when you're doing it. So if you um, mark it ahead of time, you'll know exactly when you have enough blood to go in there. So another trick, okay? So I'm gonna do all those things now. This is air dried. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start my IV. So I'm gonna use Courtney here and uh, have her pretend to get an IV. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start my IV, okay? I got this great 18 gauge because I've got a patient who might be septic, all right? And then I'm gonna take my SteriPath device and I'm gonna set my lower lock up on my IV, okay? Um, this is just like anything else. It's gonna pull back using a vacutainer like suction. But the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to uh, kind of squeeze this piston here so that I can get my diversion. Now, part of the problem is, is you've got rubber on plastic, okay? So it's easy to kind of get stuck and then push too hard. So it is a little bit of a feel. So if you're brand new to this, it might take a couple of times to practice with it just to kind of get a good feel, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get it started. And then I'm just gonna slowly push until I collect my diversion, all right? So I wanna make sure that I get all of that in. Once I have my diversion in here and this is filled, I click it one more time and now I've created a sterile path um, to my uh, to my vacutainer. And I can go ahead and I can draw all my blood samples. Um, although this is what we use for our blood culture um, bottles, we can totally use this for all of the other labs that we need to draw to. It's the same vacutainer as what we use when we just do a regular IV start, okay? Once I'm done with this, I then can remove um, the, the diversion device and I have my actual line here, which is perfect because now I can use this. I don't have to go and find yet another, um, I don't have to take it back off of the hub and put um, another uh, uh, extension tubing on there. And I can just add my one-way valve to it. All right, so this works out really well. Again, same kind of process if you're gonna be using the, the butterfly version, except it would be a straight stick and when you were done, you would just pull it out. Um, but a lot of people like using the lure like because they feel more comfortable using the IV start versus the butterfly. I really don't care. It is um, whatever makes you happy, all right? So um, obviously we wanna draw our blood cultures from two different sites and we wanna do them quickly. We need to do that before we start our antibiotics. So we a lot of times are working as a team here, right? Um, but let's just pretend that we've tried another arm, we can't get it, it's not working, um, and we wanna make sure, we need, to, we need that second set of cultures, right? Um, so if this line is working really well, we are the ones who put it in, we know that we cleaned the site appropriately, then within an hour of putting in this IV, I can go back to it if I need to. It's not the ideal situation. Um, ideally, we would get it from an entirely different site, but because we know that that's not always possible, we can totally go back to it. So what I would do is I would remove um, the IV from the hub, right? Obviously creating pressure so I don't bleed my patient to death. I need to clean the site um, the IV hub really, really well, and put on a brand new um, SteriPath device and divert out the first one to two mLs, okay? Now, especially if I've had, um, let's say I've had antibiotics or something like that running through this, this isn't ideal. I would need to take at least 10 mLs of waste to get rid of that antibiotic, but I still wanna divert out one to two mLs in here because I wanna capture any um, contamination that might be in that line. All right, and then I can do the exact same thing I did before, which is detach it from the SteriPath device and put my, um, my one-way valve on this. Again, I know I mentioned this earlier, but this is CT rated, so our CT scan can push their CT contrast through here. It's not a problem. Um, the purple is our reminder of that. Um, and most patients do really well with just this tubing. Um, if you need different tubing, then yeah, you would have to switch it out at some point. But for the most part, this works really well. Um, last thing is, is sometimes we 
get, um, we might have a patient who has really tough veins. Um, you know, we have these little old ladies whose um, veins are kind of uh, fragile and they're not, they don't seem to work really well. Um, so ideally, we would still use the SteriPath device to get our diversion. Okay, that's really the key here. We wanna get that skin plug, we wanna get into our diversion chamber. Um, but if for some reason this vacutainer is too much suction, it's just collapsing the veins, it's not working the way that it needs to, I can take this off and I can add a syringe to this. I've at least got my diversion and I can add my syringe and I can um, go ahead and uh, take my lab draw and then put it into my, um, my blood culture bottles. It's not ideal, but again, we don't always work in an ideal situation and so that's one of the options for um, getting your blood, okay? Once you have your blood in this container, um, you wanna make sure that you take the large um, sticker um, that goes with this uh, uh, blood, culture contam or blood culture bottle and put it on the bottle. And obviously you're gonna have two large stickers, so you're gonna put these two together. And the next thing you need to do is you need to take the label, I'm sorry, the outside paper of the SteriPath um, container that it came in, and you're gonna remove this portion of it and you're gonna take one of those small aliquot stickers that came with the uh, labels that you put on your blood cultures and you're gonna add it right down here. We also work very frequently as a team. So sometimes the person who's in the computer doing um, the soft ID and so their U number is what's gonna be on the sticker is not always the person who's actually standing at the bedside doing the blood draw. And we know that, we want to work as a team. So we've teamed up with our lab and um, what there it would do is um, if you put your U number, the person who actually drew the culture, the U number on here as well. Um, and then we send all of this down as kind of a, as a pair, as a, as, a, as a group, down to lab in one bag. Um, then what lab does is one, they track the fact that you've used a SteriPath device. Um, and two, if they see a U number on there, they switch the U number in the system. So if there is a contamination, it is um, assigned to the correct person. Okay, um, and so uh, big sticker, big sticker, small sticker, all of this goes in a bag together. Okay, and you would do the same thing for your second set of cultures. All right, um, the last thing I wanna say is that we do um, follow up on these blood cultures, okay? Once a month we get a report um, and we can see where all of our contaminations are. And we're gonna follow up with you on those. It is not punitive. We don't want you to think that we're angry or that you've made a mistake or that you're gonna get fired. However, we want you to be aware of the fact that one of the cultures that you collected was contaminated. We'd love for you to go back and take a look at that MRN. We always keep them. Um, you might get the email, the MRN's not gonna be in there, but you can follow up with, um, with any one of us and we'll be more than happy to give you that MRN. And you can go into the chart and see where the potential problem was. The most common places that we see where contaminations are coming from, uh, they're staph epidermis, which means we maybe didn't do a good job of cleaning this. Um, but many times we see contaminations from the top of the culture bottle. Okay, so you'd be surprised how many oral contaminants we see. I don't know if people are licking the bottle or what they're doing or if it's just the um, oral contaminants that seem to be up in the air. Um, but we do see um, some of those and those are the more common ones. So important things to remember, make sure you clean the top of the bottles. They're not sterile when you get them. Just because you flip off the top uh, doesn't mean it's sterile on top. You have to clean it. Um, and then the other thing is, is be very mindful of when you touch this. Don't put them on the ground, don't lay them on the bed. Um, remember, the diversion works great from the patient to the diversion chamber. But everything past the diversion chamber, that's on you to ensure that you don't accidentally contaminate um, this culture, okay? And again, it's really important for us to get a full um, draw into the bottle so that we have a good sample to send down to the lab. If you have any questions at all about SteriPath, please come and see me. Um, I am very passionate about making sure that we don't have contaminations in our department. Um, you can also certainly reach out to any of the TNSs, the unit supervisors, or any of management will be happy to run through it with you. Thanks so much, guys.